Hi, I'm Annabelle with Journey for Earth, and my guest today is Isabel von Fallower, who 13 years ago embarked on an amazing healing journey from advanced leukemia. Hi, Isabel. It's such a pleasure to have you here today from all the way from Munich, Germany. Um, (laughs) And I'm really very, very happy, Annabelle, to be with you because I also read about you and and I think it's fantastic that we are talking with each other. I know. It was very, um, what's the word, synchron, lots of synchronicities, I feel. Yes. Um, And your journey is just, what you experienced was just so amazing. Um, In the 2000, I believe it all began when you were studying, studying to be a professional musician and then True. you um, found out you had leukemia, and within a week, I yeah, believe it, it, was. it was. It was very strange because in reality, I was in, in near Los Angeles. I was in Long Beach because I had a, a scholarship there, and I only went home for my 30th birthday then. And uh, I break down while jogging, and it was very strange because I was jogging on the street, and suddenly I felt. It's very strange, and there was not far away a cross where Christ was hanging. And I had a really difficult time with my partner, and so I thought, hmm, maybe I should drop there and pray. And all of a sudden, it was like the film was cut, and I find myself again underneath the cross in the mossy grass, and I had fainted. And it was, it was amazing, because I was hundreds of meters far from the cross, my last memory, and then I was lying underneath the cross. So they saved me because on the street, if I had fainted on the street, it was a street where cars drive like 100 miles per hour, you know, I would have been dead, you know. Oh, my goodness. So they brought me there. And so I knew in this moment I would be severely ill. But at the same time, I had the feeling Jesus Christ is watching over me. You know, it was both in the same moment. Yeah, because that was a very intense week where you found out you had leukemia, you lost your home, I believe, your boyfriend, and your music scholarship. So it's, how, I mean, just share with our viewers your miraculous journey to healing, because it really is miraculous. Yeah, it is. It, it truly was, because it, it was such a shock to lose everything within seven days, you can imagine. And I was then in hospital. I was in hospital, and, and like five to midnight, five minutes to midnight, the doctor, uh, the doctors had made a bone marrow puncture to function to find out what was going on with me, what was wrong with me, because I couldn't walk anymore. I, uh, but before they had, to, oh, there will be nothing uh, so severe because you look great. Because of course I came from California and I had a light t- tan on the face. But then five to midnight, the door goes open and said, "Who is Isabel in the room?" I said, "It's me. Can you please sit down, uh, sit up?" And I said, no, I'm too weak. I only can lie. So please talk with me while I'm lying. And he says, okay, you have three days to three weeks uh, to live. And you can die from that, 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 that. And this went on for 45 minutes like he was standing in front of an audience. And oh, I had already visions from my childhood on. So in that moment, a vision came by. And I saw, if I go on and start this night with chemotherapy, I will die immediately. There is no chance because I'm so desperate. I've lost everything. So in the same week, my boyfriend had left before, so it was all crazy. And so I said, why should I live on? There's no reason to live on, you know? And so I called my parents and said, hey, I want not to die in this hospital where our doctor so rude like this guy. I want to go home. Please pick me up. But... Again, it was a miraculous uh, situation because they were not allowed to take me out because the doctor who was the chief of that unit of the, the hospital was not there at midnight. So I had to wait for the next morning. And now wait what happened. This guy was like maybe three years older than me, so really young. Mm-hmm. And he looked fabulous. He was one of these beautiful guys. And I just had lost my partner. I was not believing in anything anymore. And he said to my mother, please, before you take her out, Please let me talk with her one to one, one on one. I need to talk with her. And I was not like that, you know. I was in pyjama. I was desperate. I was not uh, walking anymore. I was in a wheelchair. And he drove me in his room, in his studio. And he was sitting in front of me and he said to me, If you die, my heart breaks. And he really started to cry. I knew he was seeing people die every day. He knew me one day. And he said, You know what? You're such a talented, such a beautiful, such an incredible woman. I cannot stand the idea of you dying and was crying. I said, oh my God, if there are men out there like him, I want to live. You know, this was a miraculous moment when I changed my mind. 
Oh my goodness. And I know also um, forgiveness played a really huge oh, yeah. part in your process. And you wrote, I think I read, you said, if I wanted to survive, I needed to forgive, which yes. is a very powerful statement. And why, why is forgiveness so powerful? It is really very, very important. And the point was, I still left the hospital, even if the doctor was so lovely, because I knew this state, uh, even if I had now again the will to live, my mind was so destroyed, I was so negative, that I knew my mind, my thoughts, and the chemotherapy would kill me. So I went out the hospital, and I knew, because I had read the books of Louise Hay already seven years before, so I knew from her that forgiveness was really the thing I had to do because I knew and I, I know now too that forgiveness is like poison and and there's this anonymous saying which says unforgiveness is like you were smelling poison but want the other person to die of it hmm. it's provocative but it's true because sometimes the other person has already forgotten what he or she did towards you but you are still suffering for years you are in prison not the other person it's hard to forgive though it's it's not easy it, you know it, but you know what i i had been through already uh like uh 11 years before my my aunt was murdered okay. she was murdered so this was even more terrible, you can imagine. And, and uh, this really took me years to forgive. But I went through that. And because I went through that, afterwards forgiving became easier. And I knew if I wanted to survive, this was the thing I had to do because this was poisoning me. So I was lying in bed. I could not move anymore. I could not even sit anymore. But at the entire day, I was praying and I was doing affirmations that I could forgive this guy. And, and another friend from me who also was in L.A., funnily, living, he said he told me because my, my boyfriend or my ex-partner had been, um, let's say, psychically ill. So he gave me books that I would understand his mind, why he had been how he was. And as I got to understand his behavior, I, it became easier, you know. Yeah. And because I was... On such a silver thread, I knew I just had to do it, otherwise I would die, you know. So I really did it within two and a half weeks. That's just a miracle. That's amazing. And um, I know you wrote the angels paid. The angels yeah. came to you at that time, and you hadn't you had communicated with them before, or not until this point. No, 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 no. It was like then I I went back to hospital after the two and a half weeks because then I felt okay. If I stay one day longer at home, I will die. But now my mind is strong, mm -hmm. so. I went back to the to the hospital, and they were like, "What? The miracle! You're still alive!" And I said, "Yeah, I had first to clear my mind. Now I'm ready to fight for my life." Mm -hmm. And that was really crazy because um, you can imagine if you are on, on this diagnosis, the diagnosis that the people say you have to three weeks to live, oh God, and they put you they put three days or three weeks, and you you are at two and a half weeks. So you they bring you into a single sterile room, and no one. Uh, is allowed to touch you. Everyone wears masks and and gloves and coats, and you see nobody. No one is allowed to hug you. I was so afraid the first evening that I would be alone in this room, and so I tried to keep my parents in the room. <laughs> my girlfriend. <laughs> I didn't want them to go out, but all of a sudden everyone went out, and this was really like to say a holy moment because I was looking around, saying, "Oh my God!" I would panic. Mm -hmm. but someone I didn't know at that time who it was but something was in that room a kind of a presence and it felt so comforting and I felt so safe and I knew okay whatever's going to happen if I die or if I live it's fine I'm in peace I'm taken care of I didn't feel alone anymore and I didn't panic anymore it was and years later, when I was able to really communicate and see the angels and talk to them and hear them, I found out that it was Archangel Jophiel, but by then I had no clue. I just felt the presence, you know. Oh, how beautiful that must have been in that moment. What a turning oh, so point. Fear was gone, and I had no fear of dying anymore. It was just gone. And I was like really surrendering. I was saying, okay, if it's my turn to leave this planet... It's fine. But, as I knew, so many people would uh, suffer so much, I said, but I will do everything to stay alive. 
So it, I, it was kind of paradox because I was free to go, but I was free to live. Like that acceptance of whatever will happen will happen, but then you also right. had that inner strength come as well with exactly. it. And then, just for you to, 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 to uh, show you about the forgiveness thing, then two and a half months later, I was allowed to go out of hospital for about, I think, one week or ten days before I would have the next chemotherapy. And then I did prove. I met my ex-partner because I wanted to see whether I truly had forgiven him. And it was amazing. We just had, uh, had a really nice coffee together. And uh, it was like we had been old friends, never had a relationship, nothing, nothing strange anymore. And we had them dinner with his cousin and her partner, and it was all like very normal, no problems anymore, nothing. It really was totally fine. So the forgiveness that you created within yourself, energetically then, automatically yeah. affected him to create that peace. Yeah, because he could feel I had nothing against him. But I had told him I would not talk to him in hospital. I didn't want to any call, nothing. I, for, I had to uh, forbid it because I needed my peace. Mm -hmm. I was ready and I thought I need to have the proof because the people said it's impossible that you can forgive in two and a half weeks. It's impossible. I said, yes, I did. I know I did. But I wanted the proof. And this made me even more peaceful because I, for me it's always very important also then, not only now when I know all these things, mm -hmm. but the that I'm in peace with the people in my life is very, very important for me. Yeah. Whatever happens, you know? Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so with you, I read on your site that you say everyone has angels, at least one or two by their side at any given True. time. Um, and so anyone can communicate with them. Is True. That, and how, yeah. how does one even begin, if one's never read anything about this, like begin to even communicate with them or connect with them? What are the yeah. first steps? But the, the point is what everyone should know is like these guardian angels are with us from the beginning of our lives until the end of our lives. And they are there really to support us. And as I, I have told in the other interview, they, we have one who is more the angel who, who uh, comforts us when we are sad, when we need kind of... Um, a healing hand or a hug or something and the other angel is more there for us that we stay on our path that we fulfill the soul mission we had decided to live in this life before we were incarnated and the point is for them it's very hard if we don't talk to them because they are only allowed to help us if we ask because we have a free will they are only allowed to intervene if we are in danger to die before our time is over what they did with me hmm. you know but normally they are not allowed to, to help us if you don't ask. And the way to start communicating is like they are mostly kind of behind our shoulders, next to our shoulders. And I always say take a, a time in your day or in your life where you really have silence, where you can be alone, where you have a don't disturb in front of your door, you just or go out on a, on a meadow in the nature and start to connect with the energy behind your right shoulder, next to your right shoulder, and just try to feel, okay, does this feel more masculine or more feminine? And you will feel it, you will know it. When, when you're in peace and when you're kind of in a meditative, in a trance state, you will find out. And then start to talk and start to say, hello, okay, you're probably my more masculine angel, because of course they have no sex, but from the energy you can feel a difference. And I'm sure you, you agree if you say Archangel Michael is the masculine energy with his power, no one would say this is feminine energy. And so we have just who feel more feminine. So you will feel it. And then you can start to say, hmm, I, I, I really want to start to be in contact with you. And you, you start to tell them what happened this day. What, what are your sorrows? What was what in your mind? What is good? What, so just like you would talk to a friend. And then you, if you feel maybe, maybe you feel even some kind of a touch, then you say, hey, maybe, maybe you, you let me know your name. And you do the same with the other side. And sometimes you get the name very, very fast, sometimes not. And I had a very funny story happening with a client when I had still my one-to-one -one sessions. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, what is the name of my um, guardian angel? And I said, I won't tell you. We do this exercise together. And so he found out that one was called Peter. And he told me, no, it's impossible. It's impossible. Such a name for a guardian angel. It's impossible. <laughs> 
Believe me, it's true. And I promise you, you will get three signs at least that this is a true name. So he went on his bicycle back to his business. And the first thing he saw driving behind a car was a sign in the car in front of him, Peter, baby Peter on board. And the next thing he saw driving minutes ahead, a big, big poster with a film announced where Peter was the name. <laughs> You know, and then he came in his office where he was working together with a company and he had big off uh, business. Then that the only cup who was left was not his own, but where was Peter written on, you know? So he got three times within one hour and then he called me and said, Isabel, can you imagine that? Yes, I told you it's the name. That's, those are powerful signs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's funny because one of, sorry. No, 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 I just want to tell you, maybe you re receive it, but you think, oh my God, it cannot be, it can't be that this is a true name. So, but please, if you receive something and you're not sure, ask the angels for confirmation. You will get signs, I'm sure. Well, that was one of my questions, because I, I speak to a lot of people about signs they get, you know, they ask for confirmation, and, and a lot of people I know, myself included, we doubt whether the sign is truly a sign, or is it our imagination? So how can you... Is it like if something repeats itself, like for Peter, it repeated again and again and again, that's a definite sign. But, you know, so we can ask for continuous confirmation to make sure it's not just our imagination? Yes, this we can do. And mostly if, if they really want to help us, they mostly show us a similar sign two or three times. And the other thing is how to find out whether what we receive is true or true guidance we have to think how did we feel like one minute before before this happened hmm. have you been in peace have you been in kind of a quiet state or have you been like hectic angry sad then we are not connected with our higher selves hmm. but if a peaceful state and something happens it's just a sign you know huh. and so it's it's very, very important to look for the signs, the animals which appear in our lives. Because animals are also like angels for us. Yeah, absolutely. I've had a lot of things with a hummingbird happen lately. And yeah. yeah, I know and a hummingbird represents joy, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So so it's it's about joy wants to enter even more in your life. You should not take your life so serious. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good message. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the point. If the hummingbird appears very often, it's always a sign. Don't be so serious. Start to have more. See in the little things the joy. Don't think too too far in the future. Stay here. See the this moment. You know that's and I one hundred percent agree with that. Being present as much as you can. But I know I don't just speak for myself when I say sometimes the day like life. You know, the day's yeah. activities, the work you do, whether you're a single parent or whatever it is, gets in the way. And at the end of the day, you're so tired. You know, you don't feel you can think clearly or even meditate. So, you know, when, and I meet a lot of people that are in kind of that cycle where what they really want to create isn't happening as quickly as they would like because they're just so tired all the time. So yeah. when you're in that place, what do you feel is the best thing to do there? Like, like you said, talk to your angels and ask for yeah, oh. now, what I really suggest, and, and this was also something which I, I realized in my hospital time. I was like nine months in hospital, which is really long, a long time. <laughs> and, uh, so at a certain point, I, I, real, I mean, I was always a grateful person, but I truly realized I was there in this hospital and I turned on the television because I had so much pain and I looked, watched always a very beautiful series of a beautiful dog who always solved uh, problems, you know, and I love dogs. So I, every afternoon for one hour, no one was allowed to visit me because this helped me not to feel pain. So I watched this dog. And this, this one day, uh, I was too early or too late, I don't know, but there were the news. Normally I, I was not watching news, but this day I, I came just into the news. And at that time was the Chechenian war, war. And I saw all these terrible pictures. And in that moment I realized that I just had only a little bit of leukemia. It was just nothing in comparison to war. And I realized how great can I be. I have a roof above my head. I have people who take care and want to save my life. I have food. I have the possibility to take a shower. I can drink water. I mean, I was the most happy person in life. And, and this changed totally 
I don't know my whole perspective of life, because since that moment I don't take anything anymore for granted. And I'm every single day. I'm grateful for my bed. You know, I'm grateful for my cushion. I'm grateful for everything. And this is what I do every night. For instance, I also had have difficult days. It's not that my life is so easy like it looks right now. You know, because all people say, "Oh, she can talk with Asia. Her life is totally easy." No, my life is also a normal life. I am very, very busy. I have not much time. And uh, so, but what I do every evening is to look. Like five minutes, if I'm too tired to do it longer. But five minutes look back on my day, and even if it was sim- seemingly a hard day, mm-hmm. I will find a lot of things I can be so grateful for. Mm-hmm. And I, I go with gratefulness to sleep, and this makes the most biggest difference. Whether you go to sleep and say, "Oh my God, what a day! I'm so tired. I don't know how to get up the next morning," or say, "Okay, I'm really tired." And I can be grateful for so many things. And what I found out is like what I said in the other article that the word grazie, the Italian word grazie is more powerful than thank you or danke. And now um, I received uh, also other healing modality which directly comes from Jesus Christ, which is the most amazing thing I ever received for myself. And he says like merci, which comes from mercy, is even has also very high frequency. So if you go through your day lying in bed and saying, grazie, merci, you will feel, if you do this like seven, ten times, you feel so much better, your frequency lifts. And even if you go to the toilet toilet during the day, you can just do it. Do seven times grazie and you feel better. It's so easy. You just have to do it. It's beautifully said. Thank you, Isabel. And you know that, like, is anyone can do that. Anyone can take a few minutes out of your out of their day, however tired you are. You know, there's no, yeah. And, and I say I, I had now three months in a row without a free day. You know, no free day, sleeping four to five hours per night. It's not like you know, but still, I get up this hour earlier to my morning pro. I just do it. Whatever time I have to sleep, I have only two hours to sleep, I will do it, you know. I don't let come anything through my morning practice. Nothing. So, I mean, discipline obviously plays a big part in that. You have to have some structure and discipline and follow through. Of course, I say, you know, my mission is another one because I have to be a clear channel all the time. Mm-hmm. But let's say has another profession, he doesn't need to take one hour in the morning. Five to ten to fifteen minutes is are enough, mm-hmm. and this everyone you know, no one can tell me I don't have the possibility to get that five minutes earlier or ten minutes. It's a, yeah, this is so true. This would be an excuse, you know. This is not true. But these yeah. minutes before maybe the, the the child is awake or the partner is awake, yeah. just five minutes because and just to concentrate to. Talk to the angels, and there's this wonderful archangel Ariel, who is the angel of manifestation and trust and confidence and abundance and taking care of the universe and taking care of the environment and of the animals. Mm-hmm. And this is so beautiful. Her name means the lioness of God or the lion of God. And if you concentrate in the morning and ask her to surround you with her beautiful pink light, her rose pink light, which gives you more strength, more trust, more faith, and you breathe this light and you just think what will the day bring today, and you think about what is going to come, something you might know, others you don't know, and you see everything will unfold in the perfect way, and you imagine it, you visualize it, and you do this for three, five minutes, not more, because as soon as your focus disappears, the quality is So you need to do it very, very shortly. Yeah, that's true. Makes a difference. I used to think if I didn't do half an hour, it wouldn't be as, if I didn't get half an hour, then five minutes was meaningless. But it's actually, if you do five minutes of concentrated either meditation or communing, that's better than 30 minutes of of, of nothing, really. So I always teach people, like, you don't need to meditate half an hour. And I always teach people not to start meditating with closed eyes, but to breathe in with open eyes. And while breathing out slowly, you close your eyes in slow motion and you give your brain the command to go automatically into a deep, relaxed state. 
And if you practice this for 28 days, because your brain needs new synapses, then you need one single breath to go in a relaxed state and five minutes of meditation will relax you and will recharge you like much better than any coffee can do. <laughs> That's true. I bet. No, I, I believe that. Because that's, that's so simple because the brain you can really command and you have just to do it, to repeat it. And because we need 21 to 28 days to create a new, real working synapses in the brain. And if you do this, and today I need just one breath and I'm there, I'm in the theta state, you know. I can be me there immediately because I practiced it. That's the title of your new book as well, isn't it? That's coming out in the U.S. in April 2014. The Power of Your Angels, I believe 28 Days to Finding Your... Past yeah. and realizing your life dreams. That's the reason, you know, because you need at least the, the scientific research says you need 21 days. But it's like when you have old synapses, like automatic pilots, and you do 21 days, then you have like a one way street. So if you don't go on with the practice, it will go back because the others were like a big, 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 how do you say, outer route. So you have to do 28 days at least. To have not only a one-way street of new synapses, but like eight, uh, I don't know how you say that, the big routes in L.A. How, uh, the freeways. Connect highway. freeways or highways, yeah. <laughs> ah, the big, you know, where eight rows, eight yeah. cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. that everything's connecting and flowing in different directions. Exactly. And you need the synapses not one way, but really that your whole brain is inf infiltrated by these new synapses. So 20 and, days and, is not very long. I mean, that's any, you know, anyone can take that time to do that. It's not like it's a year or six months. Yeah. It's... And of course, you can also take longer because there are some chapters where you don't have to do a lot that day, but there are days where you have to look at a lot of things of your past. But what I found out, you know, what I really found out is we can only manifest our dreams if, if we are totally free of our past mm -hmm. or in acceptance with our parts if we don't fight against anything anymore and so the book has three parts so the first part is really this tough cleansing part but the, the good news is it's much easier to do is with the energy of the angels and I really when I was writing that book it was like I really uh, said okay please angels when I'm writing that put my energy so into that book that the people feel my presence, my help next to them when they are doing the program. And I get so many messages, or my, my office gets so many messages, that people feel me standing next to them. They can even sometimes see me, that I'm really helping them going through. And that my, was my my thing, because I knew it's, it's sometimes hard to have the perseverance to do these 28 days. But you take longer. So for instance, there's one day about the shadows, which is really like 20 pages chapter. And I say, please don't go to the next chapter, but stay, even if you need one week for that chapter, stay there until you're through. But do every day the meditation of that day and the affirmations. But wait before you go further. And I have people who do it in 28 days. I have people who do it in 35 days. And I had a lady meeting at a big, big uh, convention where like thousands of people were in the audience. And she came to me and said to me, you know what, Isabel, I did it in half a year. I needed half a year for it. But now I have a completely new life. I'm the most happy person. I just took the time I needed. And so you can do it in 28 days. This is the minimum, but you can take the time you need. And when you say shadow, you mean accepting the light and dark aspects of ourselves because without doing that we can't become a whole person exactly because the point is what we always think we human beings which is so so wrong we think we need to be perfect but we cannot yeah. no, it's impossible as long as we are human beings we will have shadows Otherwise, we would be really already enlightened and fly on earth like angels. I mean, ascended masters on earth, but we are not that yet, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, and so as long as we are this, and it, it, for me, it was so amazing because, um, normally in all these angel business, all the angel people don't write about shadows. I'm, I, I think I'm the only one. Mm -hmm. And it was very, very, they only write, oh, angels are so lovely and they help you with everything. And then I was, uh, it was not so long ago, let me think, it was like three, four years ago, 
I thought, finally, I have one week of vacation. I go to Nice in France, to the Bay des Anges, the Beach of the Angels, mm -hmm. and I have one week of relaxation. Annabelle, you have no clue. I was sitting in a plane. I was sitting in a plane, having a book in my head, starting to read, thinking, this week I can read as much as I want. You have no idea. Fifteen minutes later, between me and the chair in front of me, an angel appears. An angel I had never seen before. In the plane. In the plane. And she looked very beautiful. It was a she. And he said, who are you? I have never seen you before. And she said, oh, I'm Angel Lavinia. I am the angel who helps you to work through your shadows. And now it's time to look at your shadows. This week is devoted to your shadows. And I said, no way. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> And it was amazing. And I thought, okay, at least when I'm swimming in the ocean, I would have peace, you know? No, she was lying next to me and said, so, now we... And, and, and the first question was, it was amazing. She was saying, who is the person you are really having kind of triggers with? And I said, yeah, this, this person. I said, mm-hmm. Why? I said, yeah, because he did this, 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 this to me. And he said, mm-hmm. And now, please, take time to think, when you did the same things to someone else, it might be 10 years ago or longer, but you did it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, she's right. And she helped me to work one week through a lot of shadows I had. And she, she helped me to always be in peace with both sides, with the light within me, but also with the shadow. Because she says it's not about overcoming the shadow, but accepting it. And then the moment you accept it, it has no power over you anymore. Hmm. And the thing was, I was working through shadows I had with people, and I came home after one week, and all the people's chained, had changed, because I had changed. They were completely different. I had no problems with them anymore. Uh, I developed a lot of methods to help people, which is my so-called angel life coaching, where we have like nine or ten incredible, incredible tools to help people in different ways. And there you work, really, you work through your shadows concerning money. You work through your shadows concerning relationships. You work through your shadows concerning food. You work uh, through your uh, shadows concerning fitness. Because only if you are, have kind of a fit body, mm -hmm. you have aura. That's why it's so important to do something for your body. Well, I have one more question for you. Um, who or what inspires you the most? Oh, one of the really, really uh, great people who inspired me a lot is Mahatma Gandhi. And I always quote this wonderful sentence, which is like one of my favorite sayings, which is, be the change you want to see in the world. Only you can, the only thing you can do is to change yourself. And for me, it's so inspiring to see how he really did it all peacefully because he really worked so hard on himself to be in that peaceful state. He was able to change the entire world. And Mother Teresa, I, I just, uh, is amazing. And from the living teachers, Louis Hay is someone I totally admire because I, I really um, know without her books, I would not have known this. I would not be alive still without her. So she's, uh, I think, one of these incredible examples of really being able to change her mind within seconds, to change the thoughts within seconds, because she's practiced it so much. This is so inspiring for me. I'm, 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 she's one of the big... And then I have two musicians I, I totally uh, love. And, of course, it's classical music. I had this incredible teacher who was one of the very, very famous conductors in, of the last centuries, but he's maybe not so known in the States because he did not do recordings because he said mu music has to be in the now and on the recording you have not the full spectrum, so he didn't mm. do recordings. It was Sergio Celli Bidake who was the conductor of the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra of the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. He was really famous, famous, famous. And he was not only a musician, but he was also teaching about Buddhism and about spirituality and all the lessons he gave to his students were for free and there was always a lot of students and of course it was an honor when you were invited to be a student I had the honor to be one of his students and he always said never question about 
the why. Mm -hmm. Because in Buddhism, if you do it so, you will never get the right answer. And you will lose to be in the here and now. And you will lose so much time. Just change the now. And this was one of my really inspiring teachers. And maybe you know him. He's also the big star of the Metropolitan Opera. Jonas Kaufmann is the tenor at the moment who sings always every year a leading role in the in the States also. He is uh, totally amazing because we studied together at the high school in, music, uh, at, in Munich and he was very modest then and he still is until today even if he's the tenor in the world and he did his entire key career not by pushing anything but being totally ego-free and really serving the music and he is until today the most modest person totally normal no star and this for me is he's more spiritual in my eyes than a lot of the so-called spiritual teachers I know behind stage you know well thank you so much Isabel I just want to thank you from my heart for being, you know, taking the time to be on Skype today. And um, for all of you people watching, please go to Isabel's website, isabelvonfalloa.de, where you can find more about her, her angel life coaching, you know, buy her book. Um, she's truly an inspiration and amazing, as you've heard. Thank you. Thanks, Isabel. Thank you so much.